the one, the only, Ben Cio. Good evening and welcome to Yeshiva YouTube. I am Ben Cio, and as we continue, Ms. Hakasuka, Perek Dali, Mishnah Yashchad, and Ted. Mishnah Ted starts talking about the special korba of Nisa Hamayan that was brought only on Sukkot. According to the Tanakam, it's only brought the seven days of Sukkot. According to Rehuda, it was brought on Shemayin Atzeres also. But what is this special korban? I mean, wine, we understand. Wine is something very important. All the korbanos were basically accompanied by wine libations, right? Nisa Hayayin, right? Yayin is something which is valuable. You can buy expensive wines for a lot of money. So to offer that in the Mizbeach is something, you know, you're giving a, a present, essentially what a korban is a present to Hashem, unless it's korban chatas, which is, you know, for kapara, for the sin that you did. You're giving a present to God. So <clears throat> why the water, water, I mean, water, I mean, water is cheap. Water is easy. You can find water all over the place. What kind of carbon was this on Sukkot? Only on Sukkot. Allah Chalam Shavu Sina, I think Mara derives it from the extra mem yud mem, um, in the Torah, the extra mem yud mem to signify mayim. What is so special about Nisach HaMayim on Sukkot, and why specifically on Sukkot? And the answer, I think, is that <clears throat> uh, the Gemara says that on Sukkot, the Gemara Rosh Hashanah says, Sukkot is the Gemar Din for, for the, the Gishamim. The Gishamim, the Gemar Din and the Gishamim um, are decided on Sukkot, because, right, Sukkot comes right before the rainy season. People who live in New York have no idea what we're talking about over here, but people who live in Mediterranean uh, climates, like Israel, who live in California, people like that, um, it doesn't rain during the summer, it only really rains during the winter, right? Yimosa Chama, Yimosa Gishamim are literal. Um, it really only rains, you know, it's very rare. Actually, this summer actually rained a couple of times here in Israel, which is super rare. It hasn't happened in like years. But it almost never rains here during the summer. During the winter, it rains. And <clears throat> up until a couple of years ago, it was very essential that water, that it rained a lot. The more it rained, the better it was because water is essential, essential need. You know, and if you're not having rainwater during the the summer, you need as much rainwater as you can have during the winter. Now, with the advances in technology and desalination, you know, it's become pretty much a moot point. It doesn't really matter if it rains at all during the winter because they'll still have enough rain. Israel is one of the leading, uh, is, is probably the leading technology country in the world and also in desalination, they're way ahead of the curve. But still, it's very important that even desalination is, is makes it it's, it's still sort of something be the evidence, something that the last course resort. You don't want to have to re rely on desalination because you have to take the water and transport it to, right? It's much, crops grow much better when it's natural, when the rain falls and it, <clears throat> and it waters the fields. That's, it's better like that. Obviously, if it doesn't rain, we still have this desalination, but, but Sukkot is a time for davening for rain. And that's why if it rains on Sukkot, it's sort of considered like, the Gemara says that Hashem is, is unhappy with you because, you know, you're supposed to pray for the rain. If you get the rain, you get something before praying for it, right? It's like the idea by the Nachash got cursed that he, his food will be the dust. The dust is all over the earth, a lot of his food. The point is that he doesn't have the the relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu that he has to ask. People have to ask for their, for their, for their sustenance and Hashem gives to them. The Nachash doesn't have any relationship with Hashem. So... <clears throat> It's the same way with us. We want to have a relationship with Hashem, and that's why we pour the wine libation, the water libation on Sukkot as sort of a korban. We're offering a korban to Hashem in order to entreaty that we should have a year or a winter that's filled with rain. Because even now with these elevations, still the best for the crops is to have natural rainfall that waters it the best. And you could even say it's a machlokas between the Rabban and Rabbi Yehuda. Rabban and say, Tanakama and Mishnah Tet says that it's three lugan of water. And Rabbi Yudas says one log of water. Now, if you look at the Nisa Chayayin, right, when, you, when a par, right, a bull is brought, you think three, three lugan of yayin. And when a, a keves, a sheep, is brought, then you bring one log. So, obviously, the more expensive korban is the bull. The bull costs a lot more than a sheep. So, <clears throat> the question is, what's more important, right? Is it more important that... Um, Three logan, the Tanakam holds three logan of Mayim. You should have three, a bigger measure of water, a bigger measure of rainfall. Rain is inconvenient. At the end of the day, right, rain, <laughs> as much as we like it, most people don't like when it rains because it ruins your plans. It's not fun to go outside in the rain, it disturbs your plans. 
So what is essentially better? According to the Tanakhama, it's better that we have adequate, the most rainfall possible, because at the end of the day, that's what sustains us. It gives us more sustenance. It gives us more money, better crops, a better life in the end. According to the Rabbi Yehuda, it's an inconvenience. Have a little rain. It's better to subsist, subsist on a, lot, a little bit, to, to subsist on a little bit, and not to have, you know, bothered by the rain. Do you go with the now, or do you go what's better in the future? And we possibly have done in common. You go better. It's inconvenient now, but later on, it'll bring wealth and prosperity. Hope you enjoyed today's share. See you in the next one.